brings you a special edition of the National Football League for this Christmas Day matchup. It's the Ravens and the 49ers under the lights on Monday night. We are about 40 miles or so south of Candlestick Point at a place that first opened back in 2014. As you get a look at Levi's Stadium here in Santa Clara, California. Tonight we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and the San Francisco 49ers. And hi again, everybody, alongside my partner, Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden. And, Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. It's a rematch of Super Bowl 47 minus one Harbaugh. The Ravens and 49ers are underway from the 10. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Here comes the Ravens on offense and the man in charge from Louisville, the former MVP, Lamar Jackson. And he remains the league's premier rushing threat and one of the biggest playmakers and one quarterbacks. His goal each and every season, continue to expand his game as a passer and become well-rounded. All those highlight reel plays you see, they come off the fact that he can run it, throw it, and scares defenses every time he takes a snap. Jackson looking to throw right away. And his first pass is incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. They'll run. This is Gus Edwards. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. And we're going to stop play here at least momentarily. It looks like there is a 49er who's in some discomfort. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Off the option, here's Edwards. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? They'll come to the line here, needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, Jackson. And this pass broken up. 
And the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down. And third down defense going to be vital in this game. Able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. It'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And the 49ers will take over deep in their own territory. So out comes the offense now with a long field ahead of them. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. This guy's leadership is so important to how this offense functions. He doesn't shrink from any moments on game day, and everything he does, he does with confidence. He sets the example in practice off the field and is the guy leading everyone out for each possession. Purdy to throw it on first down. That one caught by Ross Dwelling. And he'll be out right at the 35. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Play action. Now Purdy. And this will be well too low for him to bring in. It's incomplete. Maybe a little over anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield. And almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. He's going to keep this again. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A really nice effort that time. 12 yards on the keeper, picking up the first. That may be a sneak peek on this opening drive of what this young rookie can showcase, his legs. And normally, as you start a game, you're just thinking, can he get the snap? Can he hand off? Can he just execute? Instead, he doesn't waste any time on wrapping another dimension to his game showing off those wheels and picking up some nice yardage. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Back to throw, Purdy. He'll get this out wide here to Caffrey. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that. yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play and just finish him off right now? Because I think they'd love to give that big advantage early. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. Give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has, and if he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now on first down, it's Purdy. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. 
Five yards remain on second down. The throwing here, Purdy. And that one going to come up short. Low throw. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. Purdy sets up to throw again. Able to haul it in is Kittle. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 25-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want their body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut. We'll take care of the end of this drive. Purdy now to throw off the play action. They'll roll him out right. This is caught. And all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And how nice is it for him to know that when he gets outside the pocket, he's got a reliable tight end he can go to. So he's able to look his way, find his big target, and set up first and goal. Here we go now on first and goal. McCaffrey is in. Touchdown, 49ers. So that a great sequence for these guys to begin the ball game. They force the punt on one end and come right down the field and score on the other. And that's a great example of leaning on each other and building a little momentum that way. How about the defense forcing the punt? Turns it over to the offense with confidence, and they take it downfield and score. grab a 7 to nothing lead. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. Taken from about the 12. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. And they'll run the option to start the drive. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Nick Bosa using that speed to get in there and break that play up. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. First play of the drive, lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Here's Jackson. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. And he's missed now in his first four passing attempts. The rhythm is just not there to begin this ball game. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 
An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Jackson from the shotgun. And that is incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Out now is a punter, Jordan Stout. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. That's complete. It's Brandon Ayuk. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Throwing again on second down. Purdy eluding the pressure right. And he wisely will throw that one away. Well, sometimes the defense just beats you. Great coverage from the secondary. All of them in the proper position. So instead of trying to throw into tight coverage, he found a way to throw it away and come back and try again the next down. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. I'll bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? That's now six dropbacks, six incompletions. Yeah, the defense has been pretty good early. But he's got to start hitting some of those throws. He's making them better than what they actually are. On second down, it's Edwards. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. And when the defense wins and gets up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. have an extra defensive back on the field. A nickel set for third down. Now Jackson on the move. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. No surprise there. Chase Young wrecks that play with a sack. A third and long. You knew that he was going to throw it, but he just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield in coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. The Ravens send their punter out now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Fielded at the 43. A punt of 46, a return of five. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10.
The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean, or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. On second and nine, Purdy, and this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. Anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try to hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Purdy now to throw. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Adafi Owe showing off the pass rush skills. And every game we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them and they get their first sack of the contest. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now on to punt. This is taken at the 18. A 39-yard punt, a return of five. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Ravens offense back out there. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? So finally completes his first pass. Credit the defense, though. They've been showing him some different looks, keeping him off balance. Yeah, I like, it. I like the observation that you had there because when you give him different looks and give any quarterback different looks, it takes just a little bit longer to process sometimes, and you don't throw the ball with the same confidence. You're not sure that that's where you should go with the football, and that's where for the defense early in this game. And now he's got his first completion. Let's see if his confidence comes back, and he starts to get into a nice little groove. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. And they'll run the option on third and short yardage. And some room to work. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Well, we've certainly seen this before, CD. No one can quite electrify a crowd like Lamar Jackson. And we really don't know what else to say other than that was special right there. I think you pretty much said it all. But I go back to what you said about electrifying a crowd. He's also electrifying us, and we're calling the game. This guy is simply sensational. Justin Tucker for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Seven, seven. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded right around the eight. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And the 49ers settling in for their next drive.
So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Purdy on first and 10. He's going to drop this down to McCaffrey, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. Three yards remain for second down. Here's Purdy. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. Brandon Ayuk, the one he was looking for. And it's third and short. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. They were ahead of schedule after the gain of seven on first down, but the defense does not budge on second and third. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and they will take over first and 10. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 24. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Play action. It's Jackson. And this one too low. Isaiah likely the target that time. And it's third and five. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. To throw is Jackson. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. This is taken at the 23. A good work bringing that one back as he picks up about 16 on the return. And San Francisco gets set to go here. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Pretty effective opening quarter for him. Remember, he had the touchdown run earlier, and if he pops more of these 10 to 20-yard carries, it could be a long game. Yeah, those types of explosive runs wear down a defense. I think they need to add more people to the box closer to the line of scrimmage, force them to throw the football, and see if they can slow them down that way. On first down, Purdy. His throw incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion, 
That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. McCaffrey running up the middle. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 33. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it goes to James. And that's well executed there on third down. I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. And he's going to try and do this himself. And he'll go down at the 26 following a gain of six. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice gain. I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, They'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. On second down, McCaffrey. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let it pick up the first down. Back to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. The second and seven with our score tied at seven, but they're planning to change that soon. Only question, will they get three or six out of it? Now they'll run the option to the short side left. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and it's picked up by the Ravens. He's at the 50, 30, 20. And this is going to be brought back for a Baltimore touchdown. Oh, backbreaker. That'll drive the coach, the offensive coordinator, just crazy. You get it all the way down there in the red zone, can't capitalize. Instead, they go the other way on the fumble return for a touchdown. How about the aggressiveness of the defense, though? They're not about to just fall on a fumble, are they? Scoop and score is their motto, and they just did it. Now Tucker to add the PAT. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're breaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This one taken just inside the 10. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. The Niners set to take over on offense. And that last possession, really a gut punch. You seemingly had it working. You were in the midst of a very strong drive, then suddenly the fumble, and you're watching the back of a defender's jersey as he brings it all the way in the other direction. There's not much more I can add to that. I thought you summarized it perfectly, partner. You've just got to regroup and start putting another drive together. That's all you can do. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 
15 for the Niners there and a first down. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's given us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Off the option, here's McCaffrey. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. The Niners on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This time it's third and three. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. 52 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. It's a moot point now. I was curious, though, if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to pose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. A handoff, McCaffrey running right. And not much running room. Down to the 32. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Now Purdy. And that will be incomplete. Fine work by the Baltimore defense to help bring up fourth down. Textbook coverage right there. Played the ball, never lost sight of where it was headed, and stayed in perfect position to make a play on it. Able to keep the receiver and the quarterback in his sight lines. On fourth down, Kyle Shanahan will send out the field goal unit. This is a 49-yard attempt, right hash. Uh, this has neither the distance nor the accuracy. It's no good, and this will stay at a seven-point game. So a bit of a weird kick there. That wasn't an overly long attempt, but that never had a chance. You almost wonder if he might have maybe got that one on the laces because it kind of knuckled on him a bit. And this one winds up in empty possession. And the Ravens taking the field. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. They'll start with the option. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Considering they've seen him have some big gains against him throughout this game, that's got to feel like a measure of revenge as they trap him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. they got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. 
An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. Jackson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. Now, now is a punter, Jordan Stout. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. Second and five now. Purdy. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Call it a gain of three on the play. And now two yards to go on third down. They run with McCaffrey off the option. And he'll have the first down as he's up to about the 18. 67 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up second down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his pitch catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Working with second and five now. Purdy looking to throw. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here. Third and five. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. Purdy from the gun on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game. So you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. Here comes the 49ers punter now. As he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. Fielded at about the 28. Call that a 46-yard punt with a net of 40 on the six-yard return. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 34. They'll start out here with the option. 
option left. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That whole thing was thrown off track thanks to the defense of Fred Warner. Really nice play. Well, he's had success running the football in this one. and yeah, that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Now it's Jackson. It's caught by Aguilar. Two yards on the pickup there. And they'll be facing a third and 12. The goal of the wide receiver screen is getting up blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. The offense on third down tonight, they've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third down and 12. Throwing is Jackson. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Here's Jordan Stout now. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Purdy to throw it on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Second and 10 now from the 27. They'll try and run the option left side. And he stopped immediately there. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't. And at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So they didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Purdy with it on third and long. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. Now on first down, it's Purdy. He's got a man complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Back to throw, Purdy. And this will be incomplete. Brandon Ayuk, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Off the option, here's McCaffrey. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Purdy from the gun. Able to haul it in is Kittle. 
And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up the first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Shotgun now with Purdy. This is caught. Touchdown for the Niners. Jerome Jennings, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the 49ers are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Extra point attempt to follow here. And we've got a good one, Bruin. We're all knotted up at 14. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's polished off by a touchdown for San Francisco. Sends this one away. Takes it at the seven. Oh, a good looking return set up here. And they'll have very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 39 yard line. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Again, it's Edwards. And three yards there takes him to the 45. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. On third down, it's Hill. And it's not going to be enough here. A gain of four, about two feet short of the marker. Fourth down. I know they want to go for it here, and I know that their fans want them to go for it, but listen, I'm going to play head coach right here and look at the facts. Tie game, plus, even if you get the first, you still got a half a field to go. I'll go ahead and punt the football myself. The Ravens send their punt around now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And this will do the job nicely as that'll be out of bounds just inside the 10-yard line. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems he? like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. Birdie now to throw off the play action. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. It's rare that a receiver of his caliber would drop one pass, but that's now two times he's had his mitts on one and lost it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're going to lose confidence in him, though, because of the track record. Such a good player, maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him in a critical spot. Throwing again on second and ten. Purdy taking a shot for Samuel, and that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. 
early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. The Niners on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and ten. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 45. They'll start the drive with Hill. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. As a linebacker, you're taught to stay just slightly behind the ball carrier just in case he makes a cutback. But when you find the gap, shoot it. And he found it all right. Took it straight into the backfield and made the tackle for a loss. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. From the gun, Jackson. It's caught. Back him. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. They'll try and run for the first with Edwards. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef feeders on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops and tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Well, you did. That line's not eating tofu, I'll tell you that much for free. They'll run for it. It's Edwards. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Fourth and two in the NFL, not ordinarily a running down anymore. Usually that ball's moved through the air. They went ahead and gave it to the back, and he ends up picking up the first down. I'm not sure if they fooled him as much as they just did a nice job executing. Needed two, and they got three. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. Good push up front, and that run in between the tackles. That's for a Raven game here. The offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Jackson. Setting up the screen here to Edwards. And they'll work this down inside the 30. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Drop for a loss of seven by multiple defenders. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground in this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match, and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he scores free, you've got someone to tackle him.
Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. They'll set up a throw. Open man is Bateman. It's complete. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And that could be one of those turning point plays in a ball game. A field goal gets you the lead here, but they want to make a statement and get six points. And they're certainly going to get that opportunity as they get the conversion and set up first and goal. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Now it's Jackson. Steps away to his left. And he'll just throw this one over in the way of the security crew. Incomplete here. It's not like pressure would affect the accuracy and the timing of a guy trying to throw the football. And on that play, they ended up flushing him to his left. Contacted him as he's trying to throw the football. And that led to the incompletion. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Now Jackson. And it's caught. And in for the Ravens touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Tucker now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Fielded right around the eight. Well, now how about this return? A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Well, the Niners going back on offense now late in this first half. A slim deficit here in a one-possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three, and take some momentum into the locker room. Looking left sideline, incomplete. He was trying to get it to George Kittle as tight end, but it's going to be second down. Well, they'll certainly be on the tap. What's going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Purdy now to throw. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Here's Purdy. Completes it to Samuel. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. First down, Purdy. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. Touchdown, 49ers! George Kittle, 43 yards! And the Niners are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets a head of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision.
decision to make when he's moving like that. Now the extra point. He's got it, and we're all tied at 21. So that drive of four plays, and it all ends with a George Kittle touchdown. Teams locked into a good one here. 21 all the score as the kicks away. Takes it at the seven. And able to get this out to the 25. And the Ravens going to get one more drive here in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now Jackson on first down. Right side, there's Likely with it. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. To throw is Jackson. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Jackson. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. The Ravens send their punt around now as he's on to kick it away. It's taken to the 26. It'll be a 39-yard punt. Give him a good 10 yards on the return. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. He's going to go deep for Conley. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. First, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Ravens. And it's been the ground attack that's kept them in this ball game as they rush for over 100 yards in those first two quarters of play. Meanwhile, for the Niners, here's a look at their numbers throwing the football in what was a very even first half. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. started for the second half it was an even first half all tied on the scoreboard takes it at the seven and able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28 yard line here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter 
This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now, here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? Another run with McCaffrey on second down. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. That's now consecutive five-yard carries to pick up the first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that plan any down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll go option to the short side. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. And if you like defensive football, focus on the defensive end on this play. He does everything exactly right. Reads the play and makes sure he spills it for a small gain. Now a give, right side McCaffrey. And he'll make it only to the 43, a gain of two. I know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Purdy looking to throw. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. So no problems moving the ball in the first half, but they'll likely come up empty here on drive one of quarter three. And it was so important for the defense to get that stop because what we witnessed in the first half was them getting run over. And they needed the confidence and they needed to get off the field so they felt good going forward in this game. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the Ravens will get it. First and 10 from deep in their own territory. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 13. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that's going to be too high, out of bounds and incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. And they run with Edwards off the option. And just not a ton of room to work with. He'll get it to the 15 for a gain of two. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Force the incompletion on first down. And you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, Jackson. Oh, he catches it off the tip. It wasn't even intended for him. The Ravens get a new set of downs, give them 17 on that pickup. Well, just say thank you, Mr. QB. That ball gets tipped in the air, and they come out with a first down. You said it before, sometimes better to be lucky than good. Yeah, but what you have to do as a defender, that ball's in the air. You've got to go up and get it, and at worst, knock it to the ground. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll go option to the short side. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. Well, that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he's still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. 
Jackson running again. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. A loss on that play. And now third down gets tougher. Third and six. But not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner. Because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. A dump off now to Hill. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Oh, they stopped him shy of the marker. Thought they were bringing up fourth down. And then that penalty. Let's face it. They thought they had bent but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That's Javon Kinlaw busting through, and he sticks him behind the line. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. And now Jackson will look to throw it. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver. And it results in an incomplete pass. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Here's Jackson to throw. And that is incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts. This time on third down. So on trots the field goal unit, and wow, this is going to be a challenge here. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and we will remain tied here in this third quarter. Well, he might be the best kicker the game's ever seen, and we've seen him hit from 66, which is the all-time record. But anything 60-plus... That's a very low percentage kick. Don't tell him. He doesn't believe it. But this one winds up no good. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. the god McCaffrey and he gets it down to the 32 87 yards for him on the ground now he has been a tough man to bring down all night second and one if people want to run the football this is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there pick up the first down the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. He'll get this to Jennings over the middle. And he's going to get this down near the 25. Only needing two yards on second down. Now an option play, and he'll keep it. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. 
Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. You're probably talking about this training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. Purdy to throw it on first down. It's incomplete. Nice progress down the field. Was haunted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. So after the incompletion, second and ten from the 22. And he'll decide to keep this once more. Four yards there on the keeper, but still going to bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. A field goal would get them the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Trying for Ayuk, but it's intercepted. And the Ravens are going to take over at their own two-yard line. Those INTs all sting, but you throw one in the red zone. I think especially as a rookie, maybe it stings a little bit more. I think what you're saying is they don't all count the same, do they? Mm -hmm. Right? Interceptions in the red zone that you've given up points now, those are precious. So you have to learn from those and in a hurry. And now here come the Ravens. They take over here following the interception. That's the good news. The tough spot is the spot that they're in. That's inside the five in the shadow of their own goalposts here. First and ten. Edwards now on first and ten. And he was very fortunate there to get out of his end zone. He maybe got back to the two-yard line. There to stop him on the defensive side, Fred Warner. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. Here's Edwards again on second down. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for him. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. On third down, here's Edwards. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought the punting situation, so they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys will get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on here to punt it away. And he's able to get it out quickly, and this is not a bad kick here. And a fair catch called for and taken right on the midfield stripe. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Niners set up well. They take over first and ten on the short side of the field. Yeah, 
Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Could be some contact going on. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for the first down. 95 yards for him on the ground now on that, his 20th carry of the ball game. Well, someone's been having a good game so far. You know, something a lot has been sharing running. It's time to turn this again. They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now on first down, it's Purdy. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful but not any run after it. To throw again on second down. Purdy got his man complete over the middle. That's Jennings. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. to the ground attack here. It's McCaffrey. Adafe Owe there on the tackle. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. They'll go option to the short side. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Man, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. It just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. <laughs> Back to throw, Purdy. And he's got it. Touchdown! Debo Samuel from eight yards out. And the 49ers have moved out in front. Solid response that time by a young quarterback. Last drive interception, this drive the touchdown pass. I like how you described it solid because you don't get extra kudos for bouncing back if you're going to be a big-time quarterback. You're supposed to do that. But at the same time, when you're a rookie, 
That's not guaranteed, is it? Sometimes they hang their heads and they go in the tank a little bit. Not in this case. Bounced back, took his team downfield, and threw a touchdown pass. Extra point right down the middle. And they will take a seven-point lead. Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. This one taken just inside the 10. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter? run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Throwing on second and eight. Jackson, this complete left side to Aguilar. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. So eight yards on the completion there, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. To the right side, this is Edwards. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. And a loss of three to bring up four. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll come on to kick this one away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. A solid first half for him, and so far a good start to the second half. And I'm going to try not to go overboard with praise here, but I can't help it. He is playing so well. Really accurate with the ball, finding guys open downfield, and finding the end zone three times. That is up, that, that is up I've said the one interception. Absolutely. Just, just that one pick with the three touchdowns so far. He continues to have a big night here under the lights carrying the football. And some guys prefer night games. For whatever reason, their bodies react a certain way. They love the spotlight. Maybe that's what it is. The best seats in the house, the ones where he's carrying the football for his offensive teammates, the worst seats, the 11 guys trying to tackle him on defense. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. The Niners had the first down on a gain of 11. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 46. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward.
On second down, McCaffrey. We are off to the fourth corner here on this special Christmas Day broadcast. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. Run those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on to kick it away. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. The Ravens ready to take over. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 16. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he is going to lose yardage here. Two yards the loss, second and 12. How about the job there on the outside? Shed the wide receiver and was able to make the tackle on the perimeter. Opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Here's the option going right. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. A big time gain there on the keeper using his legs to hurt him. First down. So this play, you know, until recently, only something you'd probably expect to see in a college game, but running quarterbacks are certainly in vogue, and this turned into a big play. And you and I both know that for a long time, coaches worried about their quarterbacks taking too much punishment, running plays like this, and they still worry about it. But when you can break up big chunks of yardage like that, it's worth the risk, plus you're coaching that quarterback to see those guys coming and get down before the big hit occurs. Off the option, here's Edwards. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Here's Edwards again on second down. And he's got this one across midfield in the 49er territory. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. On third and one, Jackson. He finds his man, it's Charlie Kohler. And he will have a Ravens first down, and comfortably so, as he gets five there on third and a yard. And that's understanding where the markers are, because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. It's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. They'll go option to the short side. Pass the 20. A big time gain there on the keeper using his legs to hurt him. First down. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. But Jackson going to hold on to it again. 
And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Six yards there on the keeper at second down. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. And they run the option on second down. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. So yeah, that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up, and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. They'll run here with Edwards. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take him in short, steady bursts. From the two now, second and goal. Once more, Edwards. And he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Gus Edwards taking it in from two yards out. And the Ravens are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. But we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Tucker now to add the point after. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. A 10-play drive that time. And it was polished off by the Gus Edwards touchdown run. So right back to square one, tied at 28 as he kicks it away. Takes it at the seven. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Well, San Francisco's offense returns to the field. And they no longer have the lead after that last touchdown, all tied up in the fourth quarter. And a chance for this offense to mount a potential game-winning drive right here. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. Another good run for him. What else is new? That'll put him right at 150 yards for the game. So he's really made his presence felt in this one. Big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Brandon Ayuk, the one he was looking for. And now it's second down. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that'll send them back to the drawing board. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They run with McCaffrey off the option. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. His carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action. But other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. And part of the tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. Yeah. 
So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. A handoff left, McCaffrey. Oh, and that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Purdy on first and 10. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And they're going to move it down inside the 25. But right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. Purdy now to throw. And that will be incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there? The leg's still there. This has been a tough game. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to break our fourth quarter time. And his kick is good. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Taken from about the 12. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape up past the 30. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. And they'll begin by running the option. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. But we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. Again, Jackson will keep it. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. Well, sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion, and I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw a defensive end right in his face because he looked up and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. From the gun on third down, Jackson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on here to punt it away.
This is taken at the 18. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And they will take over first and 10. And San Francisco gets set to go here. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. They start on the ground with McCaffrey, and he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Well, they always talk about playing great team defense, and that was an excellent example right there. Everyone on assignment, no one in the wrong spot, everyone filling their gaps. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Throwing here, Purdy. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far and brings up third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe-tap sequence, right? I was ready to call tippy-toes if that one was completed. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Throw right side is going to be caught by Samuel. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. So just three yards on the completion there. And that'll bring up fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. This is taken at the 23. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Play action. It's Jackson. He finds Bateman over the middle. Jackson to Bateman there. First down, Ravens. the play fake he'll look to throw well, that's complete to the fullback Ricard so give him five yards there on the pitch and catch and it'll be second down well they certainly spread the ball around so far but they're definitely getting everyone involved now when you're throwing it to the fullback just shows how versatile this offense is and how everyone is a threat second down at five Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he's got this one across midfield into 49er territory. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. To throw is Jackson. On target to his man, likely. And he will have a Ravens first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one.
Throwing now, Jackson on first down. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. Throwing again on second down. Jackson, he lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot, he took it. Unfortunate for him, incomplete. the very outer edge of field goal range. It would be 56 yards if they got nothing here on third down. Jackson from the shotgun. And incomplete on the deep ball. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw. Unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This will be from 56 yards out. And he's going to miss this one. That is no good. Well outside the left upright. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. A fourth quarter miss like that, there is no lonelier feeling than that kicker right now. As we all know, a lot of these games, they come down to special teams. And when that chance comes, you have to perform in order to help your team get over the top. Could have tied it. Instead, they remain down three. Good starting field position for the 49ers as they have it first and 10 at their own 46. They'll try and burn some clock now with McCaffrey. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And while all of that was going on, we have an injured player out there in need of some attention. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. Third down. Here's McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. totally home free yet but it's looking good as they come up first and ten and the stop here will come at the 38 yard line the Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts that'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play McCaffrey running up the middle. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next.
They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. And he's going to have the first down here, as he's down at about the 30-yard line. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. This has been an up-and-down, back-and-forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Down to a knee for the 49ers. This one about to be on ice. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, but he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Well, we all just got a heck of a show, partner. This was a close game for a long time. Close at half, close down the stretch. Home team finds a way to get it done, a narrow victory. Yeah, they finished with a flourish, didn't they? Because there were times where each side looked like they were the better team out there. And the outcome is in doubt for much of this game. Every snap seemingly more important than the previous one. Great effort from the guys visiting. But in the end, how about those guys in their home stadium finding a way to win?